This is the enemy. He is well armed, expertly trained, backed up by the latest in technological warfare. He is fanatically indoctrinated by his government's intensive propaganda. His mission, to carry out military operations against the United States forces. Yet he is the one enemy whose hostility we welcome. For evaluation of his efforts and our own efforts to defeat him, helps our military planners strengthen America's defense capability. This is Aggressor, the friendly enemy. presents The Big Picture, an official report produced for the armed forces and the American people. Fort Riley, Kansas, headquarters of Aggressor, an imaginary enemy used in training United States troops. Here, armed forces of the fictitious enemy country receive unique and thorough orientation. This speech in Esperanto, the language of aggressor, is part of the Aggressor Center's training program in developing the concept of a maneuver enemy. These U.S. soldiers are acting as troops of the mythical enemy aggressor nation. They have their own complete military organization. Their purpose is to act in field exercises as an opposing army against which regular U.S. troops can test their combat training. The idea for aggressor, the maneuver enemy, was devised after World War II to meet the Army's own recommendation but more realistic training methods be adopted. Our military planners evolved a history for the aggressor nation which goes back to the post-World War II period when withdrawal of allied troops from many areas of the world left chaotic conditions ripe for exploitation. A small group of ambitious, self-seeking men determined to seize control over these torn, restive areas and use them as springboards for eventual conquest of the world. Disbanded troops of many nations which had fought the Western allies in World War II joined the aggressor army and formed the basis for a new and powerful military establishment. This detailed and carefully constructed background for the maneuver enemy provides opportunity for the American soldier to become familiar with the type of military force and leadership he may someday have to oppose on the battlefield. Doctrine and procedures for aggressor are established by the United States Army Training Command. The aggressor center provides field teams to show commanders how to utilize the training device. Complete records of aggressor activities in Army maneuvers are maintained at the Fort Riley Center. A situation map indicates past campaigns in which the maneuver enemy made advances or lost ground. Card files kept in the aggressor war room list each unit of the mythical Army, Navy, and Air Force, along with personnel data on key members of the aggressor military system, allowing realistic combat intelligence to be brought into the maneuvers.
all U.S. troops are oriented on aggressor armed forces, equipment, history, and basic characteristics, just as if they were entering combat against an actual enemy. The aggressor soldier is provided with identification documents in the Esperanto language. He is identified by uniforms different than those worn by regular U.S. Army personnel. Changes in design of the aggressor uniform keep pace with the swiftly changing nature of modern warfare. Insignia of rank and organization also differ from those of U.S. troops. for the mythical enemy designed to resemble real weapons carry markings in the aggressor language. U.S. troops designated as aggressor forces are supplied with uniforms and all equipment necessary to simulate a distinctive enemy. The soldier participating in this training exercise benefits from the experience by the additional responsibilities of his new role. Much of the equipment used by aggressor forces is prefabricated, often made out of rubber tubing covered with a fabric coating. Compressors are used to inflate the equipment. dimensional pneumatic models seen from a distance appear to be actual pieces of standard military equipment. Use of models like these achieves realism at a fraction of the cost of actual weapons. Other military equipment is made locally out of materials at hand, such as burlap, canvas, lumber, wire, logs, and paint. Careful attention is paid to design and emplacement of models. Simulated equipment allows aggressor forces to portray large, well-supplied enemy units. Flash, sound, and smoke devices have been developed to represent artillery fire, dramatizing in the training exercises the sights and sounds of battle. limited number of actual weapons which have been modified to fire blank ammunition are also used by aggressor forces. All types of military activity are carried on by aggressors. Each maneuver is carefully planned to present an authentic appearance to the American soldier.
even psychological warfare is used, giving U.S. troops an opportunity to become familiar with the type of enemy propaganda they might encounter in actual combat. Soldiers of the United States, this is a hopeless war. You cannot win. You have been deceived by your leaders. You will lose your homes, your wives, your families. You will lose everything you have worked for. Give up the fight now, while there is still time to save yourself and your loved ones from shame and destruction. Here, an aggressor psychological warfare unit prepares to airdrop leaflets to U.S. soldiers, calling on them to surrender. Surrender leaflets were used heavily by both sides in World War II and in the Korean War. Familiarizing the American soldier with enemy propaganda is a critical part of his training. Exercises like these stress the importance of our soldiers' sense of mission, a mission which must be carried out often under the full weight of the enemy's ingenious psychological warfare techniques. Aggressor activities challenge American civilians as well as troops. In this exercise, demonstrating the takeover of a town in the United States by a fictitious enemy. Demonstrations like this one, conducted during maneuvers with the cooperation of the local citizenry, serve a strong psychological purpose, familiarizing soldier and civilian alike with some of the possible consequences of enemy military operations. An important aggressor role in field maneuvers is exercise in unconventional or special warfare. These forces acting as guerrilla troops do not attack a position directly or attempt to defend any given area. Their aim is to disrupt combat plans of their opponent by diversionary tactics which may have the effect of drawing away enemy frontline troops. Firstly, U.S. forces test their special assignment capability in various maneuvers against aggressor installations. A patrol is given the task of destroying an aggressor communications unit.
special U.S. forces are trained in maintaining contact with friendly groups in enemy-held territory. In this exercise, aggressive troops, which are used also in overseas training problems, take part in a maneuver involving our forces on a mission to aid partisans. The aggressor soldier here is given the assignment to guard a mountain bridge in Germany. Object of this exercise is to see if the special skills of the U.S. fighting men can overcome the resistance of an alert, well-prepared enemy. Aggressor participation in large-scale army maneuvers follows a planned scenario or outline. The maneuver enemy troops are deployed to pre-arranged tactical positions. exercises effectively carried out provide stimulating and continuous training for all participants. The triangular insignia of the aggressor nation's ruling Trigon party identifies the maneuver enemy in battle. Aggressor forces use modern equipment and deployment techniques in engaging their opponent. Rapid, vigorous action and coordinated use of all weapons add up to a tough adversary against which U.S. forces can test their mettle. An important maneuver activity is the taking of prisoners. Here, aggressive troops are captured by American soldiers. A successful mission may depend on combat intelligence from prisoners, which may reveal enemy plans and intentions. Proper interrogation of prisoners calls for skilled personnel who can draw from the enemy soldier data which may critically affect our own battle plans.
aggressor field team commanders advise and assist commanders of U.S. forces taking part in the maneuvers. Initial plans for aggressor attack are carefully detailed. Later stages of the offensive are planned only in outline form to allow for a fluid operational combat system. As in the case of a real enemy, the object of aggressor action is destruction of U.S. troops. This is attempted in the maneuvers by concentration of rapidly moving assault units and supporting arms. victory over a strong, prepared enemy calls for all-out effort on the part of the U.S. soldier. Aggressor battle plans are unknown to our troops, so that the element of surprise must be met, just as it would have to be met in actual conflict. Umpires identified by white banded helmets and armbands keep score, recording vital data on hits and casualties, which will be evaluated after the maneuver. Appraisal of aggressor and U.S. performance in the war games becomes the basis for future improvements in military equipment and battle concepts. Aggressor forces have participated in U.S. Army field maneuvers since 1946, both within and outside the United States. The ultimate training objective of aggressor is realized in these tactical maneuver exercises. Here, aggressor forces conduct total combat operations involving every type of military unit an enemy might conceivably put into battle against U.S. troops. detail of combat is pursued as if it were the real thing. Though the maneuver scenario governs movement of aggressor troops, the U.S. soldier acting as aggressor has unique opportunity for initiative and ingenuity. He thinks like the enemy, acts like the enemy, and to all intents and purposes becomes the enemy, sharpening the challenge to his opponents. Combat units for aggressor are organized under a detailed order of battle prepared by the aggressor center. Each unit goes into combat with its own fabricated history of previous campaigns, contributing the element of pride in outfit to the enemy soldier's morale. Though this is not a real foe, 
a high degree of reality is achieved because of the thoroughness in developing the idea of the maneuver enemy. Aggressor concept introduces a competitive spirit into the conduct of training exercises and tests the alertness of U.S. Army forces. These United States soldiers training as aggressor forces provide a sober challenge to our troops who must be prepared for combat under every possible situation of climate and geography. For in today's world, the fronts of freedom are widespread. The outcome of any future conflict will be determined to a large extent by our knowledge of the nature and capability of the enemy we are facing. Toward this end, the use of aggressor, the friendly enemy, is one of our Army's most effective training aids in preparing the U.S. soldier for his ultimate objective, success in battle at a minimum cost in American lives. <laughs>